amount of computer craziness going on. Oh, so man. I'm like, I've been trying to get on for the last 10 minutes and they keep kicking me off. Okay. Over there. I, I, I think I'm ready to go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You good? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the show and then I'm going to bring you on. Okay. And it's, it's no trick questions. We're just going to talk about your program and the things that are going on within your program. And you're going to look right at the camera and you're going to tell people whatever you want them to know about you and your program and what's going on. Yes, sir. That, that, that's, the, that's the ultimate in terms of what, of what we're doing. Yes, sir. You good? Yes, sir. You I, think so. I think so. I think so. You were good then, and all of a sudden you're going to act like you're nervous. Coach, stop. You, you a veteran. I already checked your record. You a veteran. Yeah, I've been around for a minute. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I know, I know. And you at Savannah State, so I know mm -hmm. you know. Yes, sir. We, we, you know, working at our places. Mm -hmm. very but the experience you have from it helps you with the next one. Oh, yeah. So, Coach, we're going to get it started. I know your time busy, you know, so I'm, I'm going to go on and get started. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mickey Clay, the coach, as Insights presents the Claflin Athletic Show sponsored by Tony T. Chrysler Dodge Ram of Orangeburg, South Carolina. With us today, we have a young man who won a CIAA championship last year. Man, I think we could probably get the Dr. Warmack easier than we can get the Coach Gonzalez. Boy, he's so busy all over the country doing all kinds of things, promoting his program, playing people, and he doesn't rest on those accolades. He continued to bring in some more talent with what he had. He brought some freshmen in, and they're tearing it up. His job, he says, is to keep building and adding to a program, not a team. You got to understand, a program, that means he wants something sustainable. So with us today, we have the legendary coach of the Claflin's defending CIAA champions, Coach Jose Gonzalez. Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Mr. Mickey. Oh, man. Thank you for being on. You have a program that's been on fire, that's doing, that has done exceptionally well last year. Tell us a little bit. First, 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 tell us a little bit about you, Coach. You, you've had some successes and I'm going to see what you tell me before I ask you some questions, because i got a couple questions I'd like to ask. Yes, sir. Well, um, I'm um, you know, Jose Gonzalez, the head softball coach here at Claflin University. I'm um, originally from Jacksonville, Florida, born and raised. Uh, from there, I was able to go on to the University of Southern Mississippi uh, to have a good college career there. Um, played a little bit of professional ball. Um, you know, it went football there and um, end up getting hurt. So I was like, what's the next, you know, my next move. So I ended up moving back home to Jacksonville and got into coaching. And from co from there, I ended up moving to Georgia, uh, was in, in, in Georgia doing some high school coaching. Um, then from there, I went, I was able to go to Georgia Southern uh, University and help with uh, the athletic department department there. And then from there, I went to the university, Savannah State University. And I was there for 15 years, uh, uh, three years as the head football, I mean, not the head football coach, excuse me, three years as an assistant football coach and three years as, uh, I mean, and 15 years as the head softball coach. And um, I was able to build a good, strong softball program there before moving on here to Claflin University. Wow, Coach, you, you pretty much went into detail about it, which I appreciate because I thought I was going to be able to ask you a question to catch you off guard, but no. But I still have one question. You started in football. Coach, how did you go from football to baseball? Now, I can understand baseball to softball, but, but explain to people that transition. Well, to be honest, what a lot of people don't know is I grew up on baseball. I really didn't play football until I got to high school. Uh, so baseball has always been my number one sport. And um, 
in Jacksonville. I did both and, and had opportunity to uh, play both in college, but I ended up just choosing football. And baseball has always been in my heart. So after I finished and got into uh, coaching and everything, um, I was able to move on to Savannah State. Um, and at that time, you know, just to be honest, you had to do two positions, you know. Um, so um, the AD at that time asked me, did I want to be the head softball coach? Because he saw that I had been coaching baseball and um, and maybe it would be a, a, a avenue that I can take far as a career. And I tell you what, you know, um, I went in, you know, just just knowing that I was a head softball coach um, and I wanted to build something, you know, uh, because I took over a program that had been kind of down um, as an independent division one program. And, um, and, you know, and I just I just went to work from there. You know, I committed my love and passion to coaching and um, I was able to be very successful there in my 15 years. Very successful is an understatement, Coach. That's an understatement. Uh, Coach, if, if, ladies and gentlemen, you'll notice his modesty. <laughs> but Coach, tell us a little bit about the transition from baseball to softball. Well, um, to me, uh, the game, as far as fundamentals, is the same. When you, you know, to me. You know, um, I had the same approach as far as the fundamentals, grounding the ball, throwing the ball, hitting the ball, things like that. Um, I did have to learn about pitching, you know, pitching was something that's a little different, you know, as baseball, we throw over the top softball, they throw it underneath. Um, so, and I, you know, had to learn the pitches and things like that. So, you know, uh, being a committed coach that I was, I did a lot of years of working camps, digging, um, a lot of, you know, uh, being a sponge, just going to a lot of programs. I, I worked a lot of UF camps, uh, University of Florida camps uh, over there with Coach Walton and just picking him and his staff brain and just trying to uh, d d develop my craft, softball. Okay, well, what did you, what was the first challenge you faced when you went to Claflin? Um, you know, Claflin has had a good reputation of being a successful softball program. Um, coming in, I just knew that I wanted to just bring my style, you know, and um, show these young ladies that I'm here for them. I'm here to give them better and, you know, to continue to build championship teams. Uh, so just, you know, just building that relationship, having team bonding, um, being around them, um, letting them know that, hey, you got a coach that that's just not here. I know the game and I know life situations as well. Well, Coach, explain a little bit what you went through winning that CIAA tournament. I, you know, there's no way we can minimize that experience or the accomplishment that you brought to Claflin University. Share it with everybody. They, they need to understand the significance of what you, your team achieved. Well, um, you know, um, you know, I, like I said, just coming in, um, putting, showing hard work and that, you know, we got to play together as a team. Um, it's all, it's going to always take us farther than being individuals. Um, but I tell you, it was, it was, um, it was real, real special moment to be able to be the first, um, sports program here to bring a CIAA championship to this university. Um, those young ladies, they buy, you know, they bought into my system. They bought into the direction that I wanted to, you know, that I'm going to take the program and they believed in, uh, me and my coaching staff here um and what we was telling them so and that's what you know and that's what you know makes a good championship team um them believing in the coaches and buying into what we're doing um which might have been different than what they did in the past but you know um sometimes change is good well coach having been a former coach one thing we absolutely know is how critical the administrations are to your support and what you do we always say as coaches that we can't win without their support. What, what do you have to say about your administrative support that you receive there? Oh man, I, I love the administration here. Um, you know, um, we just have a good strong team from the top to the bottom. And when I say from the top, I mean, including the president of the university here at Claflin University uh, uh, on down his leadership 
Um, and, and the way he and the vision he has for this um, university is awesome. Um, the athletic director here, Mr. O'Neill, with his assistants and administration, everybody's here to, you know, uh, give these student athletes the best college experience they can give them, and they're supporting them. And it's genuinely done. It's not, you know, nothing. It's nothing that's forced. They actually, you know, care about these student athletes, and um, and that family vibe we have here is just, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Well, one of the things I want to ask you, I know having been there, that during the basketball game, Dr. Warmack sits in the front row and he's really on the officials and everything. Is he the same way at the softball games? Is he, is, is, is he as vocal there at the softball game? Because he's know, legendary at basketball. Yeah, he's, he's a competitor. Um, you know, he, um, he came out to one of our softball games and uh, he just kind of sat back and watched the game. Um, and you know, if something ain't going right, you know, he's gonna voice his opinion. But, um, I think we was handling the team pretty good, so um, he just kind of sat back and enjoyed the game. And, and I think that's big when you know you can get the leader of your university to come out and support your student athletes in their sport and um, and show his face like that's something you know these young ladies would never forget that the leader of their university has come and watched them uh play today. Oh, absolutely. You're right in that. Looking up there and seeing the president behind you kind of yeah. inspires you. Yeah, and to be honest, um, the team was playing against one of my former players was an assistant coach, and um, she saw me talking with him. She was like, is that your athletic director? I was like, no, that's the president. And she was like, the president? Is that your games? I was like, yeah. She was like, man, that's that's awesome. That's, that's, what, you, that's what we're talking about right there. So um, she got to see that firsthand. Well, one thing that we, a lot of people, and I say all the time, a lot of people claim that they have a family atmosphere. Mm -hmm. At Claflin, I've been there. And mm -hmm. I have to say that a lot, out of all the places I've been, mm -hmm. Claflin, with the exception of maybe FAMU many years ago, mm -hmm. is the only place that I've really been that you could feel it almost from the minute you walk on campus. Yeah, and, I, and, I'm, I'm, and that's what, you know, brought, brought uh, Claflin to my attention when this whole opportunity started. When, when me and my family stepped on campus and we felt the love from just everybody around, the genuine love and, and the support, that was, that was real, real good. And, um, and I, you know, and you're right though, like, cause you go places and, you know, I even hear from other universities, like, man, I can see the love and the support y'all have for one another. Um, me and the head basketball coach for the men and women's side, from the golf coach, everybody's just here supporting one another. And we, and we, we, uh, you know, it's a little friendly competition, but, you know, but we're here to see everybody support, I mean, win and do well. Every bro, every program be successful, and that's and that's awesome, you know. So, well, that friendly competition is is good. I mean, yeah, coaches are generally former athletes, and that competitive mm -hmm. gene is mm -hmm. always uh, is always dominant in our personality. So, yeah. you know, you pull for everybody else, but you kind of compete, and I think that's great that everybody does that. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. but tell me, coach, you. How many young ladies did you lose off last year's championship team? And how did you retool for this year? Because I see you have some freshmen that are making a difference already. Yes, sir. Um, you know, and it, it was tough uh, because, you know, when I took the position, it was late in the fall. And, um, you know, I had pretty much started, you know, recruiting. But I lost a lot of recruits because, you know, they were either going to be committed to the, you know, the old university I was at um, and coming here. So, you know, I just kept, you know, grinding and put piecing it t together. Um, I lost six seniors last year and um, all of them played a very important role to us winning that championship, uh, especially on the mound you know, in the circle um, that you had some great pitchers um, in that position. And that's hard to replace, you know, and the experience. Um, you had an experienced catcher. Um, then you had some other seniors that was uh, first year starters. But, you know, with the hard work and buying in what we wanted them to do, they was able to, um, you know, play a good significant role on the, on the, on the program last year. 
Um, so I was able to bring in, uh, I want to say like eight freshmen and, um, and, and, and this freshman class is going to be uh, real, real good. Like you said, you got, uh, some that's starting now. So I'm starting anywhere from at any time, five to six freshmen on the field, you know, uh, and returning only four seniors. So, um, and, um, other than that, everybody's sophomores, <laughs> wow. but, um, I think, you know, I think just the way we approach the game, the way we prepare is allowing us to be, um, continuing to be successful, you know, um, Claflin University has been the choice of thousands of students to help them prepare for a life of success and to realize their dreams. Claflin has an amazing reputation of preparing a workforce here in the South Carolina region and globally. We know that your experience here at Claflin will be transformational. The university has many articulation agreements with international institutions of higher education. Consider Claflin University as your choice because the world needs visionaries. Girls softball is key. It's you know, you don't have good pitching then. It's like basketball, you don't have a point guard or a two guard. I mean, pitching is the head of your snake. Mm -hmm. How's your pitching staff shaking up for you? It's shaking up pretty good. You know, um, we're small in numbers, but if we just keep them healthy and keep them playing the way they're playing, um, those two pitchers, uh, I think, can do what we need to do to get it done this year. Um, um, one's a senior, one's a sophomore. Uh, Jalen, the senior, she's having a great, great um, senior year as um, far as pitching and um, at the plate as well. When uh, Offensively, she's hitting the ball a ton. And she's um, and when I need to play another position, she can do that as well. But I've been kind of just, you know, since we're down to two pitchers, I've been kind of putting her more in a DH role uh, when she's not pitching. And um, and she's looking real, real good. And uh, um, Brianna Collins, who's the other pitcher, uh, who's a sophomore, um, and she's coming along with what we want her to do as well and showing um, us, us that she's ready to step in the role to help us um, bring home another championship. Okay. Well, Coach, tell me, where have you found your recruits from? Well, you, you have to have a gold mine somewhere that you, you, you toil a little harder than other places to get talent out of. Yeah. Um, well, you know, being in one state for over 15 years, you know, you know, you kind of build a lot of relationships. Um, so being in Georgia 15 years, definitely, you know, I have a lot of relationships there. Georgia is big in softball. Florida's, you know, where I'm originally from is big in softball. Um, and definitely you ball. That's right. <laughs> and you definitely want to recruit home too, you know, so you can get some good local talent um, as well. Um, so right now, I just, you know, um, I just go out recruiting. And when I see something that fits, you know, my program, uh, especially when you talk about the overall, you know, I'm talking about academics and everything, what we're trying to get accomplished here. Um, I look into that and, um, and, and I just see what it can bring. But um, right now I have young ladies committed from Florida, Ohio, Georgia. I mean, um, you know, all – just all over in the, in the in the states. Wow, coach, that you you've been on that path and yeah. Those North are Carolina, matter of fact, I got some from North Carolina too. Okay, you heard me say Duval. Duval. <laughs> Everybody knows from Jacksonville. Oh, yeah. That's Duval oh, County. Oh so yeah. If they claim yeah. they're from Jacksonville and they don't respond back to Duval, they yeah. ain't from Jacksonville. They, they, they ain't from Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> You're exactly right. Yeah. 
But, but Coach Champ, you know, when I look at your overall record, uh -huh. you know, it's almost like, again, I keep going back to my days as a basketball coach. Yes, and sir. my conference schedule, you know, prepares you for later on. But looking at the CIAA, it's only two of you that have a winning record. Uh, right. And you haven't started your, your conference play yet. W what does that tell you, Coach? Well, we're not going to take anybody for granted. You know, we want to come out and play hard every every game. Um, because once you play in conference, everybody level of play rises up, you know. And so um, everybody starts competing at a different level. Um, so we just got to make sure we do what we train to do. Uh, when we when we get on the field, we can't look at, you know, how many games this person won as opposed to this person. Uh, we just got to go out there and play game for game, inning for inning, play for play, and um, and just go out there and compete. Um, yes, yeah, we do. We, I mean, we try. I try to make a uh, all season. I mean, the early part of the season real competitive, you know, because we want to see what we at. Um, and and we have had, you know some good success this year playing good opponents. Um, and was able to get some significant wins that we didn't, wasn't able to do last year um, and, and everything. So um, like I tell my girls, you know, we're, this is preseason to prepare us for in season to make it to postseason. So now we're getting ready to hit in season and we got to win in season to make it to postseason. And um, and that starts this week. Actually, we go into the roundup, which is going to be held in uh, Elizabeth City, um, uh, North Carolina. And we'll we actually going to leave out tomorrow um, to head up there to get ready to play the north side of our conference. So we're really excited about that. Well, Coach, uh, we talked about you winning the CIAA last year, and, and that's just part of the story. When you went to the region, you were, you didn't just make an appearance. You went in there and made a splash. You won a couple games against one of them, against the host team. Coach, t tell us a little bit about that. See, people don't understand the ramifications for your university, not only to make a, an appearance, but to win some games. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, you know what? It was a wonderful experience, too. Um, and, and once again, it goes back to, and that's a great question, it goes back to, uh, what I was talking about preparing us and using those three seasons to get ready. Um, when we got there, um, you know, in a different environment that, you know, have these young ladies probably would never thought of and um, being out there playing, you know, they didn't flinch, you know, it was like they was ready for it. And, you know, after we played the first game to go in the loser's bracket, um, you know, when they walked off the field, you know, it wasn't no finger pointing. It wasn't no, you know, you know, this and that. It was like, we're going to do this thing, coach. We're going to do it. And uh, we came back the next day. And like you said, uh, end up knocking out, I want to say the number three seed. Uh, and then the whole seed making it being the first HBCU, Division II HBCU, making it to a, a regional championship. And I tell you, it was awesome, you know. Um, and I always get <laughs> Ask the question now. So, what's left for you to do? <laughs> I, I mean, I gotta win regionals now. <laughs> right, right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> you know, so um, it, it was a it was a, a year, a first year of a lot of great things, and um, and we just want to continue to build off that legacy. Well, see, that's that perception that the outside has as opposed to the inside. You know, they they call that the the mountaintop, but the mountaintop for you is to get your team to the national championship. And people don't understand how coaches keep raising the bar each mm -hmm. year for the individuals on their team and in their, and for their program as well. Mm -hmm. um, Coach, tell us a little bit about the CIAA softball tournament, mm -hmm. where it's located, when is it? Tell us a little bit about the atmosphere because, uh, you know, everybody compares that CIAA tournament life. I mean, it it's a little special. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to speak about the roundup. Roundup first is is um, is where all the teams in the conference meet at this um, one location um, where we'll, we'll the South will play against the North. And that's a great experience, too. Um, it's only two two conferences that really does this um, is um, 
you know, and both of them HBCU. You have the SIAC, who I was able to be a part of. They do what they call a crossover, where both sides come together, give them an opportunity to play against each other and us. So um, that's I think that's a real good experience, and it kind of set the stage for the for the um, for the tournament for the championship tournament because you know now you know you know what you're getting into. But um, it's actually held in uh, Henrico, Virginia. Um, you know, uh, yeah, actually it was my first time experiencing that. And um, I thought it was a real, real good uh, atmosphere. It was a real, real good place to be. The CIAA did a great job of hosting it there um, and having us, you know, with everything laid out for us and ready to go. Nice, nice location. Um, and, um, you know, it was just, and it's one of those things where, you know, like you see, you see all the teams that made it at, to that point and everybody just looking like, Hey, we're going to give it your all, you know, and, um, you know, you gotta bring your A game. And so, but it was, a, it was, it was real, real good. And I'm looking forward to getting back out there this year. Tell us about that facility at Henrico, Virginia. It must really be nice if that's the side of your CIAA tournament. Yeah, that's a nice facility. Um, I think the grounds crew do a real good job of preparing the fields. Um, the fields was nice, um, and everything was kind of pretty much close right there together, so you didn't have to um, commute that much. But it, you know, the facilities were good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you say to the Claflin fans about the tournament and coming out to support you? Oh, they need to be there. You know, I make it come make it our home field. You know, um, in in Henrico, you know that way we get tight, get a uh, Panther Nation out there, um, you know, supporting you know their Panthers, you know, to to try to do something. You know that I haven't had a chance to look, but to try to do something. I know at least here at Clavin University, back to back champions. You know, um, you know, and I don't know what the history is of, of the CIAA or you know any programs having that, you know, that opportunity, but. I definitely, you know, feel like it'd be nice to be able to do that here at Clapham University. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard that from the head man himself, Coach Gonzalez. He said, come out and make it a home field in Clapham. You got enough time to put it on your schedule. Coach, give them, give them the dates of when that tournament is. Um, that tournament will be in May, in the first weekend of May, uh, uh, May 5th through the 6th. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, you can ask a coach a lot of things, but they always know when the tournament is. <laughs> Coach, we, we appreciate you taking the time to share with us. But before I get off, I need you to do two things. I need you to leave some contact information for student athletes that may be interested in being a part of your program, for coaches that have some student athletes for you. Now, I'm going I'm to say this. You don't even have to hear from Coach. Claflin is an academic institution. Yes. So mm -hmm. take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. When you send your athletes to Claflin, we don't want them to come back after we talk about, man, you know I had to go to class. No, yeah. you're going to have to go to class. Oh, yeah. Claflin's mission is to graduate mm -hmm. those student athletes. So, That's Coach, cool. tell them how they can reach you. You can reach me on email, uh, J O Gonzalez, G O N Z A L E Z, at claflin.edu. So, that'll be J O G O N Z A L E Z at claflin.edu or you can find us on our twitter page uh claflin softball okay what's the phone number coach uh good phone number to reach me at is 803-535-5030 coach took his time said that to you so you could hear it understand it if you want to be a part of a winning program you want to be a part of an institution that's going to take care of your children yes. and help them grow from young girls to women, mm -hmm. you need to send them to class. Coach, anything you'd like to say in closing? Uh, no, I just uh, thank you for allowing us to be on your show, and um, and I appreciate this opportunity. Uh, we, Coach, we appreciate having you on. This is a Insights presents the Claflin Athletic Show by Tony T. Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram of Orangeburg, South Carolina. We always say support those programs that support you.
And there's not many programs in the CIAA that have their own weekly shows. So you could keep up with how your students are doing, how your student athletes are, and the attention that they give from being on the Claflin Athletic Show. We appreciate you being with us and stay tuned for our next week's show. And there's a trailer coming up after this where you can see some of the shows that you missed. We're on Insights Roku and on Insights YouTube. If you have a Roku channel, put Insights, I-N-S-I-I-G-H-T-S, two I's in the middle, in search. It'll come up on Thursday. It's Claflin Athletic Show Day. All this on there are shows about Claflin Athletics. So when you click it on, you can just keep it there 24-7 and find out about each and every one of the fine athletic programs at Clap. Like us on Facebook. I liked. I liked it on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Insights. Yeah. Two eyes in the middle. I-N-S-I-I-G-H-T-S. All right, y'all. from Insights. Visit our website at insights.com. Two eyes in the middle. I-N-S-I-I-G-H-T-S. Insights is a copyright of Mac4 Enterprises, a Florida corporation. This broadcast is produced under the exclusive ownership of Mac4 Enterprises and is the intellectual property and trademark of Mac4 Enterprises. Comments of the hosts and other individual speakers on Insights represent the independent thoughts and representation. Uh, talk, talk, yeah.